In this study, we focused on one of the most threatened frog species on the island of Madagascar, the Harlequin Mantella frog, Mantella kawani. They're only found in a very small area of Madagascar's central highlands. And many of the sites where they're known from actually hadn't been visited by researchers in a couple decades. And so in our study, we wanted to answer some really important questions to help inform the species conservation. So we want to first confirm where is the species actually still found today? Are these populations that the scientific community knew about, are they still there? And if they are there, how are those populations doing? How many frogs are left? Um, what are some of the important demographic traits of the populations? So we visited 11 sites in rural Madagascar and we were able to confirm that the frog is still there at eight of them at least. Uh, we couldn't find them at three sites, so we think maybe those populations might be gone now, unfortunately. Um, however, the good news is that by working closely with local people at each site, we were able to report on two new populations that the scientific and conservation communities didn't know about yet. We also were able to estimate population size for a few populations, so how many adult frogs are at each site. And at one site, it was over 100, um, in 2015. At other sites, uh, it was closer to maybe a few dozen frogs or 50 adult frogs. And the alarming thing was at the site where there were uh, over 100 adult frogs in 2015. Uh, this Just this last year, it looks like it's down to a few dozen. And so we think that some of the things that might be responsible or contributing to this population decline could be ongoing habitat loss and habitat degradation, which are really the main threats that this kind of frog faces, um, but also possibly um, illegal collection for the international pet trade, unfortunately. We also found that the lifespan of this frog is a lot longer than uh, we thought. These frogs we thought live for maybe just a couple years in the wild. We thought that they lay eggs, the eggs turn into tadpoles in the water that take a few months to develop. They leave the water, they take maybe one year to reach maturity, then they breed and they die. So maybe like a two or three year life cycle, which is common for other kinds of frogs that are similar in the genus. So what we actually found is we recaptured frogs that were eight or nine years old that had been caught back in 2015. So some part of the population actually lives a lot longer than we thought, which was kind of a cool finding that I'm excited about. This appear J paper is just one of the first results of this study. And it is important because the population that were studied were also monitored for their entity to understand how, how animals, how, how many individuals still uh, survive there. And what um, what we achieved, what Devin achieved with this project is that Mantella Kowani is just suffering from this habitat degradation, and probably from the collection for the pet trade in the past. The two things together produced several bad results. So some um, some populations that we studied in the past are now declining in entity. At least one population is apparently uh, extinct. And these are very, very bad news and very bad situation. So what, uh, what we achieved with this study is uh, really important to understand how to move on and how to put these species in a conservation perspective. It is important because knowing better the situation in the wild means that we will be able also to understand how to protect these species or at least how to protect some of the uh, residual populations of the species. In my research, I focus primarily on the population assessment, ecology, and the impact of climate change in order to propose appropriate conservation measures to those species. This time, we work 
on the rare and endangered species of amphibian that is only found in a few localities on the central island of Madagascar. This species is called Mantela Kowani and our research is part of the implementation of the second action plan for its conservation. I was very happy to be able to publish this article in Peter J because it's open access. Anybody can read it who wants to, including people in the conservation community who might not normally have access to these types of articles um, if they're not based in an academic institution or people at institutions in Madagascar that might not be able to access these articles. So it's very glad to be able to share our research this way uh, with you and the rest of the world.